Hey everybody, Michael Davis here and welcome to Bone to Pick. We're coming to you today from Rochester, New York and the famed Eastman School of Music. And uh, I'm really psyched to be sitting down with an old friend, a person I have immense respect for. She is a true virtuoso of the trombone for my money, uh, the great Lisa Albrecht. Uh, Lisa is the uh, member of the trombone section in the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, as well as uh, principal trombone of the uh, opera of Saratoga. Uh, she's an Eastman graduate herself and uh, achieved the or was awarded the Performer Certificate, which is uh, rare indeed by for any instrument, but uh, it's awesome that she got that. She has held positions in the San Antonio Symphony, the Minnesota Orchestra, and the Honolulu Symphony. Uh, she has performed with orchestras uh, across the U.S., Europe, and Asia, including the Los Angeles Philharmonic, uh, the Milwaukee Symphony, the Detroit Symphony. The St. Louis Symphony, Seattle Symphony, St. Petersburg Orchestra, London Sinfonietta, the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, and the Czech Symphony. Uh, during their 152nd season, the New York Philharmonic appointed Lisa the assistant principal trombonist, and she became the first woman to serve in the brass section of the New York Philharmonic. Uh, she's active as a chamber musician. Uh, she has performed and recorded with Summit Brass, Burning River Brass, Excelsior Trombone Ensemble, Proteus 7, and she is the founder of the Hohenfels Trombone Quartet. Uh, this is the thing that really upsets me because she has an unbelievable resume as a ja in the jazz and commercial world in addition to what she's done in the classical world. Uh, she has performed with Sarah Vaughn, Tony Bennett, Joni Mitchell, Wynton Marsalis, Elvis Costello, Seal, Henry Mancini, Burt Bacharach, Audrey McDonald, just to name a few. Uh, she's performed on numerous Broadway shows, and uh, she's recently released her solo CD, Sound and Resound, which is a beautiful project, and I encourage y'all to check that out. Really, some amazing playing. Uh, she has taught at the Eastman School and Juilliard and University of Texas, San Antonio. She uh, now has a robust private studio. She is an avid climber and licensed wilderness guy, which I had no idea about, but now I do. <laughs> And uh, Lisa, it, thank you so much for coming over today and sitting down and talking about your uh, incredible pleasure. career. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah, I'm lo looking forward to Thanks it. Thanks for the great intro. Wow. Oh, I'm well, humbled. By it's, you. it's easy. I was just looking at all, <laughs> all your accomplishments. So, um, hey, you know, let's let's start let's start from the beginning. Talk about maybe uh, growing up in upstate New York and uh, and maybe some of your early musical influences that got you steered in the direction of the trombone. You know, I don't have any other musicians in the family. Okay. Well maybe a couple amateurs accordion players and stuff like that you know the crazy grandmother um but um music was always in the house always being played and i'm kind of glad for that now because i have that context of like knowing the music of tony bennett and stuff mm. like that mm -hmm. knowing the mm -hmm. american songbook um so i don't know i just you know like most of us as a kid just couldn't wait to get my hands on an instrument so it just happened to be the trombone. That was your first instrument then? It was, and I was the last kid in line to pick instruments, and that's how it <laughs> happened, because they needed trombones. It's a true yeah, story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Please, Larry, please. Larry Zalkin said the same thing. Right? Me, when, you, when your last name starts with a Z, you're going to be last in line. That's just the way it is. But anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> so, uh, so I was lucky uh, growing up, you know, about 45 minutes down the road here, the Eastman Diaspora of Remington students. I yeah. had a Remington student, Al Baumwong was my first teacher, mm -hmm. and really a master teacher, and he made everything work right for us. He made sure we didn't have any bad habits. Um, he made things exciting and fun, and we just, we had a great band program. All the kids could play well on their instruments. Wow, okay. So, you know, just by osmosis, I feel like I had a great start. Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting. And was it was it kind of a foregone conclusion that you were going to go to Eastman? or you, No. Were... In fact, it wasn't even a foregone conclusion that I was going to go into music. Oh, okay. okay. I was kind of late on that decision. Um, okay. I think I was always thinking, oh, you know, I'll go into science or something. I really like that, you know. Um, and music was fun. And then I realized I had to know a lot of math to do science. And I was like, <laughs> I think I'll forget that for yeah. now. Uh, not my forte. So, um yeah, at the last minute, I thought, this might be the best bang for my buck. Hmm. I seem to be good at this music thing. And luckily, Al spoke to my parents because they were freaked out a little bit, you know, like most parents sure. get. Yeah, of uh, course. Is she going to be able to you know, make a living? And uh, I don't know, I just kind of focused on it. And 
Eastman was the, the, the place. It ended up being the place, and I didn't really want to go here, but I was the first kid in my family to go to college. Wow. So it was a big deal for me to okay. come to Eastman, and I was like, nose to the grindstone, you know. I was I worked really hard here because I yeah. thought, i got to make the most of this. Yeah. Well, clearly it paid off, and, and you did uh, did amazing work. Um, who were some of your teachers at that time? I know you studied with, of course, with uh, John Marcel, as yeah. did I. Um, but but I know you sort of studied with George Osborne. And, I studied and... with George uh, when I decided I was going to audition for music schools. Okay. And he was fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, he was such a gentle guy, a gentleman and a gentle soul. But, you know, he could really... Uh, Another side of him could come out on the trombone. He, mm. he had some power and he had some, he had the refinement, but he was just a wonderful teacher that um, he gave me exactly what I needed to kind of blossom into a kid that could maybe get into music school. Mm. Wow, okay. I really liked studying with him. And yeah. It was always great to see him over the years. Yeah. And I, then I pretty much studied with Doc um, until later, after I was professional, I, I took a, some sessions with Jacobs and that really helped. How was that? I've... It was great. I mean, it was. <laughs> it almost didn't happen because you know he was not well, and uh -huh. I I flew all the way from San Antonio to uh, Chicago to see him, and I get there and I get a call. I don't know if I'll be able to make it today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, Mr. Jacobs, uh, <laughs> I hope you can. I'm here, wow. and uh, yeah, it was kind of just the thing I needed at the time. I was taking a lot of auditions at that time. Mm -hmm having a lot of runner-up syndrome, and I just wanted to see if I could get over the hump. And uh, wow. and he really, you know, he really took me to another place. Yeah, that's cool. I can't remember who told me the story, but they called uh, Jacobs for a lesson, and he gives them the word, word the address of where to meet him, and then the last thing he said, and cash is preferred. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that part. I love that. It's just... I do remember walking down the hallway waiting for him, and I came upon a door, no kidding, and it, on the door was painted the William Shatner School of Acting. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. I was like, oh, I didn't know there was such a wow, thing. Wow, yeah. that's really funny. That was his neighbor. Yeah, oh, that's great. Um, well, let's jump ahead to your, your first gig that you landed, uh, which was in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And... That must have been a thrill. I can imagine. I mean, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I remember when our good friend Steve Witzer got. Uh, he was the first one of, of my group of my right. class around my class. He was a couple years ahead of me, but he got the job in uh, Honolulu, and uh, that was a big. You know, we were all so excited, and I know people were excited yeah, for you that you it, got It really game. was. It was one of those moments. You know, you're so young, and something your dream comes true, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I took um, I took that audition. I think it was in the fall of my senior year, and because I remember waking up one morning in the dorm, going, "Oh crap! What am I going to do after I graduate?" <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I had just given my senior recital, and so I said to Doc, "What should I do?" He's like, "Here, he, there's an audition in San Antonio." He gave me the international musician. You should take this. It was like a couple weeks away, oh. and. Um, so I did, and I just was, you know, I had that experience of being, I didn't know it at the time, but when you're in that zone, and you just set them up and knock them down, and it was just that day for me. Wow. Yeah, a couple of days, whatever it was. So, um, and actually, the the story about that audition is that I almost didn't go. We were, Eastman Philharmonia was making that recording with James Galway, that Corleano uh -huh, concerto, right. and Mark and I were on it, and... Uh, we were giving a concert of it before we started recording, and I had to miss that concert in order mm. to go. And the orchestra conductor, David Efron, mm -hmm. he's like, I I'm not letting you out. You can't, you can't go. And I was like, but this is the whole reason I'm here, yeah, man. Right. Yeah. He said, I won't accept anyone uh, as a sub unless it's John Marcellus. So I told Doc, and he's like, I'll sub for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he and Efron had some sort of a ping pong rivalry at Interlochen or something. He told me this long story. Wow. Okay. So he's like, Money. "Yeah, I'm, I'm up for this." So I went back to Efron and I said, "Well, guess what?" Yeah. And so he had to let me go. Oh, and that's so great. And so Doc really? stepped in for me, and, and I think he played Don Juan on that concert. Anyway, uh, if it hadn't been for Doc, on several levels, <laughs> I never would have gotten launched. Uh huh. Uh huh. 
Wow, that's a great story. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that's that. That's a good I, doc I, story. I can, I can see Doc. Right? right? He getting, was like, you know, it yeah, yeah, I'm sure he was ribbing Efron right? the whole time, right? Right. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about um, your New York years, which is, you were in New York for how many years? It was quite a long time, right? Yeah, I had, I think, um, about 15 years. Yeah, okay. Um, and, you know, I had been in San Antonio about 10 or 11 years. Okay. And that was actually, if I can just say, it was like a great first job for me. Um, and I, I've been really lucky over my whole career to, to play with amazing section mates. Mm. I mean, I have just, that really is what has helped form me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and certainly San Antonio was one of those places. Um, we're actually getting ready to do a sort of a San Antonio Symphony alumni bone thing. Oh, cool. You know, they're on strike right now. Uh-huh. So an inactive support. And when you look at the lineup of people that held a job there, it's just like, wow, it's kind of humbling. But anyway, um. I had taken the audition for the Philharmonic, and I was just about ready to quit music at that point. Really? Yeah, I just, I was frustrated that I couldn't better myself. I think it was, it was an intense time. I was really young and like programmed to go get the big job, you mm -hmm. know. And I, and I had to learn that that isn't always necessary or the mm -hmm. best thing for you. So, mm -hmm. um... But I was getting ready. I was studying actually languages. I had gone back to school. I was still working in the orchestra. And I saw the audition for uh, New York Advertise, and I was like, I'm going to just give this one more thing. Wow. Okay. So Nissan won that audition, but I was runner up. And as a result of him then going to Philly and them not having time to have another audition, they appointed me. So that's how I started there. Wow. That's fantastic. Um, it, was, yeah. it was great. It was a real Zenith experience for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, and then I know we worked together in New York uh, a few times, and uh, what? How were you? Uh, and then I guess from being there, obviously you started getting a lot of the freelance work, and and in not just in the classical world, obviously in the other other yeah. I mean, I most, too. I mostly did classical work, and I remember seeing you because I was I did like a year and a half with the Philharmonic on my first appointment, and um, and then I had to go back to San Antonio because I had contract. So okay. Um, then I decided I was just going to quit that job. I was like, you know what? I think I'm done here. It's been great, but I want to be in New York. Mm. I was just really ready mm -hmm. to, like, as I say, step off the cliff and just see on every level what that would be like. wanted to live there. wanted to... Uh, I just, just was really had the energy for it. So, so I moved back. It was about six months later, which was good because people still knew me. And right, I, sure. But I ran into you... Um, I think it was something we were doing maybe for the New York Brass Conference or something. Yeah. And I yeah, said, so yeah. I'm going to be back. And, you know, and, you know, what's your advice? And you're like, well, you're going to be pegged. <laughs> you're going to be pegged. It's just going to happen. And Is that what I said? Yeah. Yeah. I so. yeah. And, and I mean, to some extent, that's true. And I don't have, you know, I'm not you. I don't have the jazz chops. But Well, I'm not you. I don't have the classical chops. Well, like you that. know, it's like Eastman was such a good place for me because... Playing in the jazz ensemble really informed me on many levels. Absolutely. It's not yeah. like I even studied jazz courses, but just being around everybody and being around Dobbins and Wright mm -hmm. and, and Jim Dozier and Ray Ricker, it was just like there were so many talented students. That's the thing about Eastman. I always feel like I learned so much from my cohorts, you know? Same, 100%. It was yeah. just off the charts. Yeah. So that, with that, I was able to kind of fudge my way into commercial stuff a little bit mm -hmm. and i really enjoy that to this day i just love you know when we have a pops i love getting my silver sonic out and yeah that's great <laughs> that's awesome and i mean you were working quite a bit in uh in the theater world and broadway and and uh yeah. in various things it. and obviously from your resume you've done a ton of uh, commercials. Yeah, a lot commercially of commercially oriented. I, I, I'm not really that fond of that word, but yeah, it's, a lot of know. it came through orchestra work. You know, with touring uh -huh. people, touring, um, and others were standalone gigs. But I have always, um, I mean, I think it shows that variety for me has been essential. I don't think I was ever destined to sit in one position anywhere mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. very long. Uh, I just really wanted to have new experiences. Even the, the orchestras I played, the different styles, you had to transform yourself to play, you know, a certain way, one one place. And I enjoyed I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, from the from the 
jazz commercial side of things, you forget that looking at your guys' world, you forget that, you know, each orchestra plays its own way and you have to fit, fit into that stylistically as well. You yeah. Know, it's good, it's, super good point. It's surprising. I've ended up some of the places I have, I think. What, I and, you guessed. know, I've listed many of the orchestras you played. So, so many, it's a, so, very impressive. What What are some of your favorites that you've... Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you enjoyed. You sounds like you really enjoyed your time in the New York Philharmonic. Yeah, it was a really exciting time. I mean, there was so to play in an orchestra of that size and refinement, and also the the risk taking and the playing there. You know, just was like you could really uh, be so thrilled in performance. Mm. Plus, you know, you had great conductors mm -hmm. for the most part, um, great soloists. It just, it just was. I was like a kid in a candy shop, you know, <laughs> but. Um, I think it's so interesting to try to answer this question because I, I can't think of like a performance or even sometimes a conductor. There are those that stand out, but, um, I always feel like it's kind of like the section I play in that really is memorable to me. Oh, okay. You yeah. know, that's, that's where I have some of the best memories of performances. Um, the Minnesota years were great. Mm. I say years. I mean, I played there for a year when, when Doug was in Cleveland, but. I've subbed there a lot over the years, and that is just, for my money, one of the finest orchestras I've ever played in. Wow, uh, okay. It's, it's a great group of people. It's easy to sit down and work there. And uh, I did a, a few concerts for a week at Carnegie with the Lucerne Festival Orchestra, which is sort of a, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's sort of a hand-picked orchestra of oh, European nice. principles and stuff. Uh -huh. It's kind of off the charts wow cool okay. and uh and and that was great doing uh we did Mahler 3 with Boulez and some concerts also with David wow Robinson. that yeah, must have been awesome that was yeah that was really really memorable to me wow very cool um let's talk about coming back to Rochester and and what's going on with the RPO and and what made you decide to well, come home in a sense yeah literally um it felt like it was time to make another move <laughs> <laughs> It's getting antsy, you know. Um, well, you know, I liked working in New York, but I also was ready to take it down a notch and kind of change, right? <laughs> New York can do that to you, that's for sure. <laughs> and I thought, I don't know if I want to grow old schlepping this schlep. So uh, Mark Kellogg called me and said, hey, we have a second opening. It's a one year. It might become permanent. And I was like, I'm there. It's home. Uh -huh. I could be near the, the parents. Uh I can have maybe the kind of life I'm envisioning next. So it's been really great. It's been a really great move. And I have enough time with my RPO job on the side to create other projects I want to do, whether it's quartet or we just did a big trauma ensemble project recently in Syracuse um, or the CD or whatever it is. You know, I like having I like having time to do other things I can't do trombone all the time i just can't i know some people can but i am not one of those yeah no, so it's great. nice yeah. to have this schedule where i have some breathing room and i can get outdoors or draw or whatever i want to do and how many years have you been back in with um, the orchestra this is the 13th season wow okay yeah it goes fast wow right? that's really yeah. that's great and uh how's the health of the orchestra does it seem uh i know Years ago, when Jeff Tyson came in, that was like a big boost for the orchestra, yeah. I believe. You would yeah. obviously know much better than I would. Play. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we did all the right things we needed to do during COVID to keep us solvent and... Uh, Good to hear, yeah. And exposed, you know, uh -huh. streaming, and yeah, it, it helped. Uh, so we're hanging in there pretty well, I think. Nice, nice. Well, let's talk about, you, you referenced your, your chamber... Uh, it's almost like a parallel career in chamber music and, and your solo uh, CD, which again is wonderful. I was Thank checking you it out. So much. Su That's... Such beautiful playing, really. Thank you. Thank really you. something to be very proud of. Um, maybe share some of the things about uh, Hohenfels or, or any of the chamber groups you've played with, so many of them that. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know, I have to say, uh, one of the highlights that I don't talk about that much. But I'll take this opportunity. One of the highlights I think I've had over the years is doing early music. Oh, okay. I did for a few years in New York, really got into that study with uh, Greg Ingalls on Sackbutt. And I often thought if I, if I could do the, any of this over, that I might spend more time doing that. Because really? the okay. rap is incredible. Huh, okay. It's a, you know, it's a real vocal style. It's just ultimately so fulfilling. But it was hard to do everything at once. Um, 
and certainly my bread and butter has been in orchestra mostly so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that that has been a real love of mine um and in terms of of hohenfels well hohenfels started out as sort of a Let's have some fun. Let's play some <laughs> Oktoberfest gigs. <laughs> oh, we need some costumes. Yeah. Okay. You can't beat a nice uh, later hose in, uh, in it's yeah, hard the right beat. time of the year. It's really you hard catch to my beat. drift. And, <laughs> and we, now we are experts in this. And um, we decided if we had one gig, we would call it a success. <laughs> and we did. And then we kept getting calls. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in 10 years of this now, but that's only some of what we do we've been we've you know we've played some they're on the cd we've done mm -hmm. some a lot right. of work with organists uh we've got the tour to germany and austria about i don't know six seven years ago i do a lot of arranging for the group mm. we like to play all different kinds of music so um that's a nice creative outlet for me very arranging. cool like yeah. you understand yeah. what it is right yeah it's just absolutely. like writing and getting that it's very very satisfying to me totally that's great and Speaking of uh, that, like, what was the what? How'd you come up with the concept for the sound under sound, and and uh, what was what was the uh, the process like for well, you? I mean, it's always it's always a challenge whenever you take on a, any kind of solo project. I never wanted to do that, and it wasn't uh, my idea. It was Bill Meckley's idea. Okay. Bill, I hope you're watching. It's all your fault. Um, thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Um, I'll send you the bill, Bill. Um, <laughs> So uh, Bill was at Eastman uh, during my time. He was a DMA and music ed student from Bonus and uh, ended up uh, being a dean in, in Schenectady. And we did some playing together, did some ensemble stuff just for fun, reconnected. And he's like, you should make a solo CD. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, no, 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 we have, we have a new studio here. This might be my last year. I'm thinking of retiring. I could produce it. It wouldn't cost you much, you know. So I was like, really, does the world need another? <laughs> and I thought, I should take advantage of this opportunity to use the recording studio. Yeah, good idea. And of course, sure. none of that is what happened. Um, the project completely took a left turn because it was too far from here. Um, there was just a lot of reasons. It just didn't fall into place that way. But by that time, I had so much energy I had momentum with figuring out what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. I knew I wanted to use an organist. So I'm like, I guess I should just keep going with this. Um, so it's completely self-produced. If you can get a label, get a label. It'll save you a lot of time. Um, yeah, it, it was a mountain of work. It was more work than I ever imagined. Um, but now on the other end, I'm, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing, I'm, I'm sure you feel this way, there's nothing like creating your own project yeah. and then you know the i mean it's the process it's, of it is the thing it's, it's a challenge yeah. that's for for no matter what what kind of music or what it, it's just yeah it, the, it's, the logistics of, yeah. of doing it are are what right. what, what it gets frustrating but i mean it's obviously something you should you are incredibly proud of i mean the playing on there is spectacular and and i did the best i yeah. could that day <laughs> well it was a good right. day <laughs> Tell me a little about your uh, your hiking and climbing. Uh, oh, you want to uh, get into all that? I want, I want to hear about it, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I had no idea until I was doing oh. a little uh, research for the Yeah, that's, that's the balance in my life that keeps okay. me sane. Okay. You know? um, yeah, I, I love being outdoors, especially upstate New York, being from here. Gorgeous, you know, yeah. Getting to the Adirondacks as much as I can. Uh, it's It really keeps me grounded. It keeps me balanced. There's something very focused about some of the climbing I used to do. I don't do some some of that technical stuff anymore, but just being out in nature hmm. uh, calms me into a place where I can get the creative thoughts going again for what's next. And uh, yeah, I've, I've done some winter mountaineering school stuff. I wanted to get really into that and, and just, I, like I said, I like to do a lot of other things other than play. <laughs> so. Very cool. Yeah. How, what, what's an Adirondack 46er? An Adirondack 46er is a hiker who has climbed all the uh, uh, 46 high peaks in the Adirondacks over, I think it's 4,000 feet or something. Wow. It takes a long time. I can imagine. Me. Yeah. 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 Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I thought at first, I'm a, I'm a huge San Francisco 49ers fan. I thought there was some relationship not, to that, but I can no, see it. No, not at all. Struck no, out on that one. No, it's a lot of mud and uh, <laughs> and ice and grit. Yeah, it's 
it was an accomplishment. I'm, I'm fairly proud of that because it was such a physical accomplishment. And I was always that kid that getting out of gym class for band and they hated me. You know, sorry, I have a dress rehearsal. You know. So to be able to do something like that is kind of like. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Um, Lisa, this has been so great just to spend some time with you and get get everybody uh, introducing our fan base to, to you. Uh, most of them, I'm sure, already know you, but to get to know you better and uh, talk about your career, it's, it's been a, a real treat. Um, you know, you had such success early on, and then it sounded like you had frustration, the fact that you were, yeah. you know, and I was curious if, if you could, uh, you know, just what advice you would have, especially for, I guess, orchestral players, like getting started, qualities that you'd look for and then also like that what advice i mean you, you seem like you handled it beautifully the fact that you won the philharmonic position i'm sure helped a lot but but yeah you had any advice you can give us on that on that um, front well you know i just kind of always followed my gut my heart whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. and that has really led me to the things i wanted to do so you you know get in touch with your inner whatever's motivating you and going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and diversify, diversify, diversify. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. But some Especially sage these days, advice. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, since you're a lady who likes change, what's uh, what's the future in, in, hold for uh, Lisa Albright coming oh, up? Oh, you know, yeah, it, I don't rest too often. Well, this big project we just did, which was sort of a nature and music project um, in September, that was a lot of work. Now that that's done, I'm kind of chilling, but I think there might be a John Cage project around the corner. Oh. Yeah, something different. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds very cool. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll look yeah. forward to it. Uh, to hearing that. just enjoying the rpo yeah i love it, I love it. well <laughs> continued success with everything uh everybody check out sound and resound an awesome cd i strongly recommend it and uh if you're in rochester come here to lisa play with the uh, rochester philharmonic and uh again continued success and big thanks for, for thank you to it's an honor in. to be on bone Tooth. oh i think <laughs> well i hope everybody enjoyed this as much as i did and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next time on bone to pick